In this video, I'm going to show you how to use dates in JQL. This is probably not the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to give you some useful tips and resources so that you can take your JQL skills to the next level. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links down below. I have links to the merch store, links to my paid courses, links to the free courses, and most importantly, links to the sponsors that help make these videos possible. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. This video is sponsored by Appbox. So in the wonderful world of Jira, we have a couple of dates that are built in. We have our create a date, we have our start date, we have our due date, and most importantly, we have our resolve date. And all of these dates are going to allow us to take action in Jira to be able to bring back reports of data that we want to see within the bounds of a specific date or range of dates that we're interested in seeing. Now, there's a couple of ways to interact with dates. And one of the things that I want to mention here before we jump into the demo is that you aren't limited to just those out of the box dates. Jira does have a date custom field that you can leverage and create your own date fields that are also queryable in the same way that I'm going to show you how to query the out of the box dates. So let's jump into Jira. Let me give you a couple of tips and tricks on how you can take your JQL skills to the next level when it comes to searching for items with respect to dates. So here we are in Jira and you essentially want to get to a search. So I'm going to click on search over here and then I'm going to scroll down. I actually have to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to click on view all issues. And this is going to take us to our main search. Now, for the last, I don't know, nine, 10 months, Atlassian has been killing me with this super annoying feature called create a date. But as you can see here, it's already giving you a tease of what we're going to be discussing today. Now, it's sometimes kind of hard to see, but if you click into it, you'll notice that Atlassian is leveraging the field create a date, and it's telling us something. Within the last 30 days, I want to see what issues were created. Now, Obviously, Alas is doing this from an efficiency perspective. And if you've seen any of my videos where I go into search, you know that the very first thing I do is tell you, click on that X because this is going to limit the items that come back. It's only going to bring you issues that came back within the last 30 days. But anyways, that's not neither here nor there. That's a, my own little personal rant because I absolutely hate that Atlas and out of this feature because it is super, super mischievous. It will give you a false sense of the issues if you're not careful, right? Because it will hide all the history and it's only going to give you a subset of your data. So if you're not careful, click on that little X. But anyways, what I do want to direct your attention to is all the options that are available to us when we do click on this created date. Now, as I mentioned, this is going to work for any other date field. So let me show you another example. So I can click on plus more and I can do due date. And when I do that, you're going to notice that when I click on due date, I have the same drop down of information with the one exception. We have an overdue button here. And then if I do like my resolution date, then we're going to have the same thing, right? We're going to have the same little box of options that are available to us. So I want to walk you through what all these different options are and kind of give you a better sense of what they look like. And then I'm going to give you my little pro tip because you can actually do this in the JQL mode, but it's a lot harder. And I want to show you how I practice or how I validate my queries to make sure that I'm getting the right dates because English is hard and coding is harder. <laughs> and if you're not very, very careful, you're going to get the wrong data. And when it comes to JQL, accuracy is king because you don't want to be working off of the wrong data, especially because when you do a JQL, you do a report, you want this data to make business driven decisions. And if you don't get the right data, it could lead to some bad results. So let me show you how to, you know, double check your work or how to use this UI because it's going to be the easiest way to get issues back. One last little disclaimer that I want to do in Jira. And I do wish this would be a functionality that Atlassian would bring, but in Jira, there is no easy way to say, Hey, what are the issues that were worked on this like sprint or what are the issues that were worked on this month or this quarter? And you can only, leverage the fields that are given to you, like your resolution date, your created date, right? But there isn't that granularity of like, show me just September, show me just November, right? Like you have to tie your November search with, I want issues that were resolved. Unfortunately, if they weren't resolved, you don't get that. And additionally, like I want the issues that are in progress in the month of September. You can't do any of that. So I do really think that this is a limitation that Alaskan should investigate, but 
I'm going to show you what you can do because it is still pretty powerful. You just can't do specific, very finite searches like, hey, show me everything that was in progress in January of last year, right? Like that's just not going to be possible, at least not with the out of the box tools. There might be a plugin that you can explore, but within Jira, that's not going to be possible. So what is possible though is I can tell Jira, show me all the tickets that were created in January. Show me all the tickets that were resolved in March. Show me all the tickets that were due in November, right? And so that's what I'm going to be able to show you. And so let's take a look at that. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well maintained, optimized, and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool optimizer for Jira to audit and configure, clean up and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. So when it comes again to any of these date fields, when you click on them in this basic, right? If you switch to JQL, you ain't going to be able to do this. You have to be in switch to basic here to be in this basic drop down mode. And we're just going to pick this resolution date. And what you're going to do is you're going to have these options. And so we have within the last X. And so if you click into this box, you're going to get the little radio button. And then here, this is where you can put like the last five minutes, last five hours, last five days, or the last five weeks. And so if you want to find issues that were resolved in this month, then you're going to have to put like the last four weeks and keep in mind that it's not super accurate, right? So we are here as of this recording, November 26, which means that maybe I'm going to get a little bit of October into this mix, depending on the mathematics of how four weeks are considered. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you want to go the different route, right? Maybe you want to say, Hey, give me something that was resolved more than five minutes ago. You can do that as well. Or you can do five hours ago, five days ago, or five weeks ago, right? So now this is going to give you kind of like the opposite, right? The first one's going to tell you, Hey, show me everything that was finished within the last four weeks. So you put the bound, you go back four weeks. And if it was resolved before it doesn't get included. And if it was resolved after, so like, let's just say November 1st for simplicity, anything that was resolved November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, so on all the way to today, it will show up. But anything resolved in October or September, it will not show up. But if you go with this one and you put four weeks here, well, it's going to ignore everything up to November 1st. And it's going to give you everything from October, September, August, right? Wow. Well, counting backwards in the months is not the easiest thing to do. So that's what the difference is between these. So think of them as inverses of each other. The next one is, I think the one that's most popular is the one that gives you that finite granularity that you're looking for. So let's just say that you do just want to see everything from yesterday to today, right? So you can actually just come in here and you can click on this little calendar and you can click yesterday's date. You can click today's date and then that's it. When you click on update, it's just going to be that one day. And then the last thing that I, you can do, which I don't usually recommend because it's kind of confusing. If you did want to basically do what this one does of the within the more than, then you can put the date of like, let's go three weeks ago to three weeks later. I don't really like it because it's kind of confusing, right? But you can go within the last three weeks and four weeks, right? So you can kind of just do a, a range of that, those dates, which, but I like the in between. I think this is a little bit easier to understand. And so this is my favorite one. And this is the one I would recommend you do most often. Now, little pro tip, if you ever do an import and you're like, oh crap, I messed up the import. Well, it's super easy. Just go within the last five minutes. And usually, unless a bunch of people are creating a ton of stuff, you can always do like reporter equals me and create it within the last five minutes. But you do have to catch this really quickly. Then it's going to give you everything that was created within the last five minutes, you can be able to find what you just imported. But anyways, back to the main topic. So the final thing that I want to show you is now that you've kind of made up this, this information here, right? This is easy, right? I like this UI. Let's just go with the in-between one here where we're going to go. Let's just go a week, the 19th to the 24th. We're going to see anything that was resolved in that week, right? And all we have to do is hit search and then it's going to bring back the results. Now, obviously nothing was resolved here. So let's go back sometime, right? I, my Jira is not the best because again, I'm team of one, <laughs> but we're just going to, you know what? Let's just find created because I need to find, um, it, again, my, my Jira is the worst example because I don't actually use my Jira in a real world situation, right? So here we are, we have the created within the last 
month. So this is everything I created in the month of November. But the trick that I wanted to show you, the, the little cool thing that I wanted to bring to light, is that if I click on switch to JQL, this will create the JQL for you. So now you know what it looks like or what the syntax is supposed to look like so that if you don't want to use the drop downs, which I think are super intuitive, you can always just code it up in the JQL directly. And if you're not ever sure, you can always switch back to basic and see what your JQL brought. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to doing JQLs, you want to be as accurate as possible. You don't want to be assuming things. So it is possible for you to think that you're getting the right dates because it's less than greater than stuff. It can be confusing if programming is not something that is natural to you. And so this greater than or equal to and less than or equal to those can be confusing. They're like, are you getting the dates outside of that range? Are you getting them inside? And so if you're just ever curious or just not 100% sure, switch back to basic and hit the drop down because this will almost always be a lot more accurate. So anyways, those are some tips on how to use these date fields so that you can search for dates within Jira. And again, you are limited to a date field, right? And you're not gonna be able to do some cool stuff like, hey, just show me everything that's in progress um, in the month of November, right? That's not gonna be possible. But although you could do like created and then the drop down of status equals in progress, but then the problem you have is some people go and create their issues like a long time ago and then they're not being worked on. So again, it just kind of falls apart. So at last thing you're listening, that would be a cool feature to see what's in progress in this month. I know a lot of people ask for it. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let me take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. How do you ensure all of your documents and confluence go through the right processes or reach the right stakeholders before they're finished? After all, every document is different and you may need a slightly different process for each one. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Introducing Workflows for Confluence. It's an all-in-one document management tool that allows you to build powerful document workflows with custom page statuses, approvals, unique document versioning, and integrated publishing controls. Check out the link in the description down below to get started. Now back to the video. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, again, make sure to smash that like button. And if you made it this far, you haven't subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out the links down below as I got merch, free courses, paid courses, and most importantly, links to the sponsors that help make these videos possible. So go try out their apps, start a free 30-day trial, show them the support, and I'll see you in the next one. So